Well, thank you guys for joining me today for Wednesday Bible Study. All this week, we've been talking about the power of the tongue. We're going to jump in the Word today and do a study of that. Uh, you know, the words that we speak control every aspect of our life. They control whether we move forward in life or they control whether we move backwards. The tongue is a very powerful thing. And, uh, you know, some people say that you are what you eat, but you're also what you speak. What you speak over yourself and your family controls and directs your very life. So let's have a word of prayer and we'll jump right in the word today. Father, I thank you today for every person that's watching today. Father, I just pray blessing upon them. Father, I pray that as we go into a new year this year, that we would watch our tongue very closely. Father, I pray that we'd be speaking words of faith and blessing, uh, not curses. And we give you praise and we thank you today for your word. Uh, give us understanding of it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, if you watch me the last couple days here on YouTube, uh, you've seen some uh, scriptures that I've given you, uh, one of them being Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, where the Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So we have a choice in this life, that we can either speak life over ourselves, constantly speaking life, that's words of faith, or we can speak death over ourselves. Now, a little bit later on, I'm going to show you how the, we do that. But the Bible says that whatever we say, whatever we speak, that is the fruit that we're going to eat of. And, uh, you know, people uh, don't take seriously their words as they should. And, uh, you know, your words control every aspect of your life. If you want to move up in your life, if you want to move forward in your life, uh, it all depends on what you're saying with your mouth. Another scripture, uh, write this one down, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. I've said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that thou both, thy seed and thyself may live. Again, the words that you say have control over the life and your and death. Blessings and cursings. Now, if you remember all the way back in the book of Genesis, God used words and faith to actually create the entire world and the universe that we live in. Uh, in chapter one, God said, said the words God said, if you read that, the words God said appeared 10 times in the very first chapter of Genesis. God used words and he used faith to create the, the, everything that we see. And you know, God has created us in the very same way. Angels aren't even created like this, but we are. So the words that we speak have such great power. Uh, to change things. I mean, that's why we pray the way that we do. Uh, Jesus used words to change things. I want you to take your Bible today, if you have your Bibles, and look over with me in the book of Mark. Uh, let's go to chapter 11 today, verse 12. Mark chapter 11, verse 12. I want to show you an example today in the scripture where Jesus used words to change things, and how important he said our words are. Are you with me in Mark chapter 11, verse 12? The Bible says, on the morrow, when he was come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing the fig tree, verse 13, afar off having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And look what Jesus did in verse 14. Jesus answered and said unto it, No man shall eat fruit of thee thereafter. And this, listen to this, his disciples heard this. Jesus actually cursed this fig tree. He was hungry. You know, a lot of people ask me, uh, did Jesus ever get hungry? Did he eat? Did he go to the bathroom? 
course he did. He was as much man as he was God. So he did get hungry. He goes to this fig tree and he notices that it doesn't have any figs on it. And let me read you again what he said. He said, no man shall eat fruit of thee thereafter forever and ever. Now look what happened in verse 19. And when evening was come, he went out of the city. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw that the fig tree had dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remember said unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. If you notice, the Bible specifies here that the tree was actually dried up all the way down to the roots. Now, what Jesus is about to say is very important. So I want you all to listen to this. I want you to take a pen, a highlighter, and I want you to mark this in your Bible because this is going to show you how much power you have with the words that you're speaking. Jesus said in verse 22, he answered and said unto them, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith is what he was talking about. Look at verse 23. Mark this in your Bible. For verily, or truly, that word verily means truly. Verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. You notice it doesn't say believed on this mountain. It says that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith. There's that word again. Believe those things which he saith. They shall come to pass, and he shall have whatsoever he saith. There's that word again. Not believeth. Look how we stress and how important it is what we say and what we say it. Now the word say appears three times. And the word believe only appears once. Look at verse 24. Therefore I say unto you that whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and thou shalt have them. And when thou shalt pray, forgive ye, have any ought against any, that your Father which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. So we see here that Jesus really stressed how important it is that when we pray, that we say the words uh, that we're always speaking in faith. So listen, whatever you say with your mouth, whatever you pray with your mouth, the Bible says that you shall have it. So if you're constantly speaking negative things, uh, if you're constantly speaking doubt, if you're constantly speaking sickness upon yourself, that's what you're going to receive in this life. But if you're speaking blessings, not curses, if you're speaking things that are positive upon your life, you're going to receive those. Whatsoever you saith, you shall have what he saith. What powerful, powerful words these are. I remember when I first started, uh, I worked over 20 years as an auto worker in Georgetown here. And you know, when I first got on hired on the plant, everybody was required at that time, uh, they still are, to start on second shift, and you have to actually work your way up to first shift. And uh, they go by seniority there, like they like most companies do. And I remember the group leader I had, the day that I hired in, it was July 96. July the 15th, I still remember that day. And he, was, our group leader was walking us around the plant, giving us a tour of the plant. And I'll never forget that he told us, he said, you guys will never, ever see first shift. You will never be on first shift, ever. And you know, when he said that in my spirit, I refused. I mean, I tore that thing down right then. <laughs> I refused to believe that. Now, I was on second shift for a long time. I think it was almost eight years before I seen first shift. But in my mind and in my spirit, I just kept saying to myself, I really believe that I'm going to be on first shift. And let me tell you something, guys. I got together with a bunch of godly men 
at my church and they laid hands on me and they prayed that the Lord would make a way and open a door for me to go to first shift. And you know, it was just shortly after that that I did actually make it to first shift where I stayed the rest of my career. It was tough working second shift. You all understand if you've done that. But listen, you can use words to actually change things in your life. But you got to have faith. The Bible says that you have to speak it. You can't doubt in your mind. And you have to believe what you're saying. And then you have to receive it at the same time. That's what faith is, guys. That's what faith is. Faith is saying and believing that we receive even before we see it in the natural. But we believe it by faith. Our words control our very lives. Now, take your Bible. I want to show you one more scripture today. In the book of James, chapter 3, I want to read uh, verse 3. Turn there with me, James chapter 3, verse 3. Look at verse 3. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn about them their whole body. He's talking about the tongue here. Behold also the ships which, though they may be so great, are driven by fierce winds, yet they're turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so, look at verse 5, the tongue is a very little member and boasts great things. Behold, how great a matter is a little fire kindred. And the tongue is a fire. Listen to verse 6. A world of iniquity, so is the tongue almost our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire fire of hell. Listen to this. Every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things of the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly, evil, full of deadly poison. Now listen to this. We use our tongue, verse 9, Therewith we bless God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the mouth proceedeth both blessing and cursing, my brethren. These things not ought to be. We see here that our tongue actually controls every aspect of our life. The direction of your life, you know, uh, I remember when I was a real young boy, I had a neighbor that lived down the street from me, a little, little big lady, was good friends with my mother, and uh, she had a grandson that I spent a lot of time with, and I remember I would sit on the porch out there, and she would sit in her porch, and she would swing, and she would say, Mitch, you're never going to amount to anything. I remember I used to say that all the time. She would say that to both of us her grandson and me too, you're never going to amount to anything. And then she would laugh like she thought it was so funny. But you know what? I refuse to receive that into my spirit. Every time she said that, I rejected that. And there's going to be times that people's going to curse you and they're going to say things that are negative upon your life. And you have to actually rebuke those in the name of Jesus. But you have to speak blessing over yourself, whatever you want in this life, whatever it is, if you speak it with your mouth, the Bible says that you can have it. If you speak negative things, if you speak sickness, if you're always talking about how sick you are, that's what you're going to be. You're going to be sick. If you're always talking about how broke you are, you're going to be broke. So we have to pray and believe and speak things that we want to see in our life, even if we don't see them yet. We have to speak those things that be not as they were, so to speak, as the Bible speak. Uh, I remember uh, many, many years ago, uh, I was watching TV. I was watching Marilyn Hickey. I don't know if you all remember her. I don't know if she's still on TV or not. 
but I had some uh, very bad problems with my allergies. Uh, my nose just constantly ran all the time. And uh, I remember I was watching Marilyn Hickey one day on TBN, and she said, somebody out there has allergies, and I want to pray for them today. And, you know, I, of course, my, I woke up when I heard that because I, I had went from an allergy medicine that the doctors had put me on to actually uh, something stronger to help out. So I was taking a lot of medicine for these allergies. She said, I want you to come up to the TV screen. I want you to lay your hands on the TV and I want to pray for you. Now, I was at home by myself at the time. I thought, well, that's, do I need to do that? I did it anyway. And you know, when she started praying, I just felt a heat. I'm telling you come over my body, and I was so convinced that I was healed that I actually threw my allergy medicine away that day, and uh, I didn't experience any allergies for years. Now, they've come back occasionally that I've had issues, but I'm constantly having to rebuke that sickness. I have to resist it. It's something that I have to resist, and uh I have to actually speak words over myself of healing and health. And you have to do the same thing. Uh, let me just tell you a few things that we say with our mouth. And then we wonder why we're sick all the time. Uh, one of the things that we say, have you ever heard anybody say, my back is killing me? Have you ever heard people say that? People say, my back is killing me. Now, you know, if you say that enough, and if you believe that, and you say that out loud with your mouth, the Bible says that you're going to have what you say. When you could be saying, Lord, I thank you that my back is healed, that it's straight, that my spine is in alignment in Jesus' name. Uh, another thing that we say all the time, we do, you know, a lot of these things that we say, we don't realize that we're cursing ourselves when we say them. Uh, have you ever heard anybody say, I don't believe so? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. And then they wonder why they have such a hard time believing what the word of God says. Uh, another one that they say, that scared me to death. Think about that. You say that scared me to death. You're actually speaking death over yourself. Uh, another one, I'm just dying to go. Uh, here's one that I used to be guilty of saying myself that tickled me to death. Have you ever heard anybody say that? Not a good thing to be saying, folks. Uh, that makes me sick. Another thing they say is I'm sick and tired. Have you ever used that? People say I'm sick and tired and they wonder why they don't have any energy and that they're sick all the time. They're saying that constantly. They're putting that in their mouth and it's coming out in their life. Uh, here's one. I believe that I'm taking the flu. You ever heard anybody say that? They're not only saying that they're, they're taking the flu, but they say that they believe that they are, which even, which even makes it worse. And then the, the final thing is I doubt it. These are all words that we speak every single day that can bring death that can bring curses, that can bring sickness, that can bring defeat, that can bring lack into your life. When we should be using this very, this very same force that we have, the ability that we have to speak words and make things change, we can use that in a positive way. We should be saying, Lord, I'm blessed. I'm healed. Thank you, Lord, that I'm prosperous. Thank you that I'm debt free. Thank you that I have a marriage that is right with God. Father, thank you that uh, my children are safe and secure. Let's begin to begin to speak words of faith over ourselves. And all these things that we say that are negative, this year, let's put those behind us. Let's, be, let's get in the word of God and begin to speak the way Jesus taught us to speak. And everything that you say with your mouth, 
you're going to have it. Father, I thank you again for every person that's listening today. Father, I speak blessing. I speak health. I speak prosperity. Uh, Father, those that need a, a miracle in their life right now, Father, we believe by faith that it's coming. And Father, we thank you today for Jesus. And Father, I pray that if there's one watching today that's never received Christ as a Savior, that they would receive him today. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you guys again for watching today. Listen, be watching me on every social uh, network. If you have any questions, always go to our website, mitchcarmack.com. There you can write me. Uh, if you have any questions, if you have any prayer requests, uh, our address is there. Please send me some cards and letters. And uh, if you do that, I'll read those every Wednesday. Hey, I love you guys. I'll see you next time.